Good day. Welcome to Bible Class Topics. I'm Kerry Dillinger, and today's topical study, Jesus Christ said, I will give you rest. We'll start out by taking a look at Matthew 11, 28 through 30, and also 2 Thessalonians 1, 5 through 7. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you are also suffering, since indeed God considers it just to repay with affliction those who afflict you and to grant relief to you who are afflicted. Rest is promised for the weary and the heavy laden. Jesus insists we must come to him and learn his ways to be granted relief from our earthly afflictions but he doesn't promise us that that relief will come while we're here on earth. The relief that he promises, the rest that he promises us, is in the after a while, a home with heaven, with him and God the Father. In this lesson, we want to talk about rest during Old Testament times. To whom is no rest promised? To whom is rest promised, and when shall Christians enter the promised rest? And we've already given that away. We'll have more to say about that in a few minutes. When we talk about rest during the Old Testament times, we begin in the beginning. God rested from his works. In Genesis 2, 1 through 4, thus the heavens and the earth were finished, all the host of them, and on the seventh day God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. Let's also take a reading from Hebrews 4, verse 8, and we'll continue on down through verse 11. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken of another day later on. So then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God for whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest, so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. And of course this leads us right into the fact that the Jews rested on the Sabbath day. In Exodus 20, verses 8 through 10, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant, or your livestock, or the sojourner who is within your gates. Paul had this to say in the New Testament, Colossians 2, 16 and 17, Therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in question of food or drink or with regard to a festival, a new moon, or a Sabbath. These are shadow of things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. What Paul is telling us is this. If someone wants to keep a day of rest, that's up to them. Now we know that in the New Testament there is no discussion of Saturday as a day of rest. The only thing we have to go by in the New Testament is the fact that we need to gather together on the Lord's Day, partake of the Lord's Supper. Those are the things that are needful for Christians. But if someone chooses to take a day of rest, Paul says you can't judge them over that. If there's a festival or a new moon and someone wants to set that aside as a day of rest, that's up to them. It's not commanded in the New Testament. Paul says these are a shadow of things to come. 
but their the substance belongs to Christ. We also know that Israel eventually rested in Canaan. We'll have more to say about that. And it takes us back to Hebrews 4, 8, and 9, which we've already read. We'll have more to say about that as far as Israel taking their rest in Canaan in this next section. To whom is no rest promised? Well, evildoers have no promised rest. Israel was to take the rest in Canaan, but they didn't quite get there in a timely fashion. You remember the story of the ten faithless spies? They were sent into the land to spy it out. Twelve spies, they came back. Ten of them said, we can't do it. We can't make our way into that land. Two of them said, we can't. Numbers 26, 63, and 65. These were those listed by Moses and Eleazar the priest who listed the people of Israel in the plains of Moab by the Jordan at the Jericho. But among these, there was not one of those listed by Moses and Aaron the priest who had listed the people of Israel in the wilderness of Sinai. For the Lord had said to them, They shall die in the wilderness. Not one of them was left, except Caleb the son of Jephunneh, and Joseph, jo Joshua, sorry, the son of Nun. Caleb and Joshua are the only two left from all of the males of adulthood that walked out of Egypt, that entered the promised land. Remember, not even Moses entered the promised land. Well, evildoers have no promised rest. Because of the ten faithless spies, Israel's rest in Canaan was delayed by 40 years. Others who will have no rest are worshipers of the beast. Revelation 14, 11, and the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. They have no rest, day or night. These worshipers of the beast and its image and whoever receives the mark of its name. So whether we take the beast in Revelation to be Satan himself, or whether we take the beast to be one of his minions, those that choose that road will have no rest. As a matter of fact, it's pretty clear in Revelation 14.11, what they will have is weeping and gnashing of teeth for eternity. Evildoers will have no promised rest. Those that worship Satan or his minions, no promised rest. But what of just people that have nothing to do with evil, have nothing to do with Satan, but just refuse to believe on Christ? Unbelievers will have no promised rest. Hebrews 4, 10 through 13, we're back to Hebrews 4 again. For whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore strive, there, there's that word strive again, to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and marrow, discerning the thoughts and the intents of the heart and no creature is hidden from his sight but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account to whom is rest promised well first those that fear the Lord. Hebrews 4.1 Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us fear, lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. And as we saw in Matthew 11.29, those that learn of Christ are promised that heavenly rest. But not only must they learn of Christ, those that come to Christ. In John 6, no one can come to me, Jesus said, unless the Father who sent me draws him, 
and I will raise him up on the last day. Of course, we believe that we're drawn to God through the Word, through the Bible, through the New Testament. We read that and see what it is that we need to do, and we do it. That's how we come to Christ. Those that believe on the Lord, the rest is promised. Hebrews 4, 3, and we've already read verse 11. For we who have believed enter that rest, as he has said, as I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Although his works were finished from the foundation of the world, let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. There are those that will not enter the rest, those that do not believe on the Lord. Therefore, those that believe on the Lord, those that learn and come to Christ, those that fear the Lord, those that take up his yoke, as we discussed in Matthew eleven twenty nine and 30. You know, I run into people who say there's nothing we need to do to come in a right relationship with God. Well, how do you take up a yoke? That's not nothing. That's something. Luckily, blessedly, he says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light, but it's still a yoke. Christ needs us to take up his yoke if we want the promise rest. Those that are the true people of God, as we've read in Hebrews 4.9 and 1 Thessalonians 1.7, these have the promise rest. And finally, those that die in the Lord, as we read in Revelation uh, 14, 13. Let's read that. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. Jesus warned his disciples in Matthew 10, And you will be hated for all or I should say, you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. As we said earlier, we gave away the answer to this question, when shall we enter the, the promised rest? And that happens, as we read in Hebrews 4.10, when our work here on earth is ended. When is our work here on earth? work here on earth ended? Well, that comes after death. Hebrews 9, 27 and 28, And just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly awaiting for him. And we've already read Revelation 14, 13. Write this, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Well, the Hebrews passage points us directly to the judgment. And now we'll take a long reading from Matthew 25, and we'll start in verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, and feed you, or thirsty, and give you a drink? And when we did see you, a stranger, and welcome you, or, or when did we see you naked, and when did we clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, 
as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will turn and say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, in the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. The Christian rest begins when we die and when we're taking up to God and the Son. Heaven then is the Christian's rest. The key to entering that eternal rest, as we have seen, is our faithfulness during our earth life. Hebrews 2, 2-4, two for since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at first by the Lord and it was attested to us by those who heard while God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. And we could also read Hebrews 4, 1 again. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us fear lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. We've had quite a bit to say from the book of Hebrews in this lesson today. We have a series of lessons, a playlist on this channel that covers the entire book of Hebrews. I'll put a link to that playlist in the end cards. If you need to contact me privately, BibleClassTopics at gmail.com, you can do that. I'll try to get back to you as quickly as I possibly can. Today is the 16th of December, 2021. It's possible that I'll be off the grid, so to speak, during the holidays, but I hope to be back by the end of the year, if not the beginning of 2020, Lord willing. The lesson today was from an outline I found in a small book entitled Sermons of R.C. White, published in 1945, pages 92 and 93. Thank you for watching. Thank you for studying with me. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share. That's the way the channel will grow. You being here to the end of the video is very much appreciated. Let's all stay safe. Let's be careful. Let's pray. Let's pray for each other. Please pray for me and pr please pray for this effort. Till we meet again, may God bless.